I have reviewed a lot of espresso machines on this channel, including every single Breville. And from those machines, there have been many excellent and very capable options for beginners. However, I cannot think of one single machine that didn't come along with the caveat that you must be willing to learn proper puck prep, how to properly dial in espresso, and how to steam milk. For those just looking to be able to make lattes and espresso-based drinks at home, this can be a little bit off-putting. Not everyone is looking to take on an entirely new hobby. And for that reason, the Barista Touch Impress might just be the most compelling all-in-one espresso package for beginners I have reviewed to date. Is it the perfect machine for you? Let's find out. Just quickly before we get going, I want to make it very clear, this video is not sponsored in any way. I purchased this machine completely with my own money. If you want to check out your local pricing for the Barista Touch Impress, I will have it linked right down in the description below. Starting off with the build quality and design, we are starting off strong, as the Touch Impress is using Breville's newest chassis that was first shown in the Barista Pro. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer, considering this is a brand new machine, However, in the past, Breville have made some very odd choices, such as on the Barista Touch and Express Impress, which both now use the ancient platform from the original Barista Express. This new form factor is sleek, simple, and I think it fits in well with a wide variety of kitchen styles. I often find that touchscreens tend to cheapen the overall look of an appliance, but in this case, I still think it looks very premium in the way that it is recessed and in the quality of the screen itself. Speaking of which, this is probably a good time to mention that any flickering you see on the screen is a result of the camera frame rate and is absolutely not visible in real life. Looks aside, using this newer chassis also brings along with it a bump to overall build quality. The machine feels very solid all around with its metal shell, solid metal tamping arm, and brand new steam wand that has a neat one-piece design and a red accented finger loop. Two areas where I was slightly let down on the otherwise solid build were on the grind adjustment and on the tamping chute cover. Both appear to be real metal, but they are actually shiny fake chrome plastic, which is a little bit disappointing. It isn't such a big deal on the chute cover as that's a part you're rarely gonna touch, but I would have liked to see some more attention paid on the grind adjustment knob. Moving on, I think it's important to start with an overview of all the features that this machine offers as a segue into the user experience. The Barista Touch Impress is essentially an accumulation of what I would consider to be some of the best parts of the three previous Breville machines. It has the integrated tamping and smart dosing from the Barista Express Impress, which is a key element of the user experience of this machine. It also gets the updated Thermojet heating system from the Barista Pro, which is a significant step up in steaming speed when compared to the older generation Breville models, such as the Express. And finally, it also takes the automatic milk texturing from the Barista Touch, along with the ability to program in a wide variety of custom drinks that can be recalled using the touchscreen. Not to mention, this is quite simply the best automatic steaming we've seen yet from Breville, even better than the Touch and the hyper-expensive Oracle models, but we'll get into that later on in the video. Otherwise, as far as features go, it is pretty standard in terms of the layout and functions. There is a removable water tank on the rear, a good-sized drip tray with handy storage in behind, and a hot water spout for tea or Americano drinkers. But it's not so much the range of features that impressed me over my weeks of testing this machine. In fact, I'm generally pretty against overly gimmicky or feature-heavy machines. Instead, it was the simplicity and foolproof nature of the Touch Impress that makes me think that it could be the absolute best home machine currently on the market. You could be making the same drink every single day, and I still think that this model would be worth it. Once dialed in, literally anyone, and I mean anyone, can make a drink on the Touch Impress with absolutely zero experience, and I do not say that lightly. You just turn on the machine, select a drink, click grind, tamp, attach the porta filter, pull the espresso shot, put the milk picture on, click steam, and pour your drink. And honestly, I think this is probably what many people envision when they picture buying a home espresso setup. But the reality is, is that using an espresso machine is generally a pretty involved process, and there simply hasn't been one, within a reasonable budget, that is this straightforward to use. 
Each drink can have its own settings for type of milk, milk temperature, milk texture, and even a custom setting for the espresso shot if you want to tweak the recipe to better suit the taste of the milk being used. For example, I could have a 2% milk latte at 60 degrees Celsius with very fine foam for latte art, while my girlfriend's drink could be oat milk at 70 degrees Celsius with thick foam for a cappuccino. As long as you select the right recipe and put the right milk in the pitcher, the machine is taking care of the rest. The same can also be said for non-milk drinks, such as an Americano. They can be programmed in as well to allow you to pull the shot and then have the machine automatically dispense a predetermined amount of hot water. And because of the location of the water spout, you don't even need to move the cup in between. Now, some people might be eager to point out that there are super automatic machines, such as those from Mila and Jura, that are equally simple to use. The difference is that with this Breville, you are still maintaining the quality of espresso and quality of steamed milk from a manual espresso machine using full 18 gram doses, non-pressurized filter baskets, and having true control over the milk texture. It's kind of the definition of having your cake and eating it too. One user experience negative that I did notice is that the touch and press does seem to move through a lot more water than previous models, leading to the need to empty the drip tray and refill the water tank more often. I'm not exactly sure why this is, but it's definitely an observation worth noting. Moving on to the espresso, let's revisit what I said in the intro about learning curves. When you first get an espresso machine, no matter if it costs $500 or $5,000, the first thing you need to do is dial in your coffee. This is the process of finding the perfect grind size so that the flow isn't too fast or too slow, which would result in overly sour or overly bitter espresso. And honestly, for many people, that is where their home espresso journey ends. This task can be very frustrating and ultimately leads to many people returning their shiny new machines right back to the store. Not only is this a bummer to new owners, but I'm sure that somewhat selfishly, this is an issue that Breville has been eager to solve as well. On the new Impress models and the Touch in particular, this usually frustrating process has been shockingly simplified. Grinding the correct amount of coffee is controlled and checked by the machine. Tamping pressure and levelness are also controlled by the integrated tamping arm. Taking out these variables is already a huge advantage for first time users. After you have your consistently dosed and consistently tamped puck with zero effort on your part, you pull a shot and the machine then monitors how long it takes that shot to run. When it's done, it will then tell you whether you need to grind coarser or finer to reach the right flow rate next time. You make the adjustment, pull another shot, and that's it. As with any dialing in, it's important to remember that you only have to do this when your machine is brand new or when you get a new coffee. Once you have that right setting, it's just grind, tamp, and go. I usually warn people to clear out a couple hours and save probably half a bag of coffee if they are brand new to dialing in. On this machine, I could confidently hand it over to someone who has never pulled a shot and they would have drinkable espresso within three to four attempts, which is pretty amazing. Now, the one caveat to all of this is that you obviously still need to dial into taste. The machine might want you to pull a 30 second shot as a starting point, but if your coffee is tasting best at 25 or even 20 seconds, then you are the only one who can determine that. And that really just comes down to experience and personal preference. Milk steaming on the touch and press takes up a lot of the advertising space you see surrounding this machine. Breville is very vocal about its new milk system. Like milk, but IQ, milk. Despite the very cringy marketing, I had pretty high expectations for the performance. And for regular cow's milk, this machine steams very well. I didn't notice any drastic differences between it and the older Barista Touch or Oracle models but these are all still the best automatic milk steaming systems that I have yet to come across. Where the Touch Impress is different from those models is that it now adds not only the option to customize the temperature and texture, but also to tell the machine what type of milk is being used so that it can adjust the amount of air integration and the steaming accordingly. Now this is a genuinely important feature, as anyone who has tried to steam alternative milks such as soy milk or oat milks know, different milks steam and texture very differently. In my testing, I was moderately impressed, but I wouldn't say blown away by this feature. The machine was definitely making changes to the steaming process for each different milk type I selected. 
cow's milk and soy milk got very good results. Good enough to make latte art if that's what you're looking for. However, for what I would consider to be the trickier alternatives, which are almond and oat milk, it was able to make probably seven out of 10 quality foam, but it wasn't able to reach that micro foam quality that you need to make latte art consistently. I think my expectations might have been a bit too high for the system, as alternative milks are just so tricky to steam, even by hand. And I don't think it should really undermine what Breville have achieved here. The ability to input your milk type and have the machine adapt accordingly is really, really useful, and it has absolutely improved the steaming quality of soy, almond, and oat milks, making this hands down the most capable automatic steaming Breville. As with any of their auto steaming machines, it's also important to note that you can pull the steam arm out and take control with 100% manual steaming if that's something you want to play around with. Steaming speed was also quite good thanks to the fact that this machine uses the newer Thermojet heating system, taking around one minute to steam a pitcher of milk to 60 degrees Celsius. Now this is slower than the manual Barista Pro by about 15 seconds due to some power loss from the automatic steaming. However, this is still a totally reasonable power and you easily get that time back with the automatic dosing and tamping, as well as the fact that you can do other things such as clean up while the milk is steaming, you don't have to constantly be watching it. What Breville have made with the Barista Touch Impress kind of feels like the machine this industry has slowly been working towards over the three or so years that I've been reviewing machines on this channel. It's managed to take out much of the learning curve of espresso in a way that doesn't sacrifice on quality and also doesn't cost an absolute fortune like their top of the line Oracle models. Speaking of the Oracle, I think that that model line will soon be on the way out with the introduction of this one. There really just isn't a reason to spend thousands of dollars more for the Oracle or Oracle Touch, except in rare cases where you need to be regularly making five, six, or seven lattes back to back to back all day long, and would therefore benefit from the speed advantage of brewing and steaming at the same time with a dual boiler. If you're just making two or three lattes, this machine is plenty. I tried very hard to find all the negatives I could before making this review. The plastic parts that shouldn't be plastic, the increased water usage, but overall I'm just thoroughly impressed with this system. If you're looking for a completely fuss-free way to make cafe quality drinks at home for the first time, then this is the machine you've been looking for. It's the first model that I can safely recommend to friends and family without the fear that I'll need to provide hours of coffee tech support as a result. Again, if you want to check out the Barista Touch Impress, I will have it linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.